OK, conditional probability. This has the following notation. It looks like this. So we read this as the probability of A given B, and that's just a vertical straight line there. What this means is the probability that event A will happen, given that event B has already happened. OK? So thinking about what this means, if we're looking at the probability that A will happen, given that B has happened, we're restricting our sample space down to just B. So we know that B has already happened. We now want to find the probability that A is going to happen. So it's just that space there, which is the same as the intersection of A and B. But we're not looking at that intersection as a proportion of the whole diagram, only as a proportion of B, because we've restricted it down to B happening. So we would need to do that as a probability out of that B circle. That's the important formula here for um, conditional probability. Very important formula that you need to know how to use. It can also be rearranged to look like this. So that's an alternative form that you might need to use in uh, various different examples um, where it's, it's that you're wanting to know the probability of um, A and B, knowing that there's some conditional probability involved. OK, so for example, a bag contains seven red balls and four white balls. Two are selected without replacement. So that's the important bit here. The fact that they're not being put back in the bag means that the prob probability of the second pick is conditional on the first pick. So what happens the first time when you pull the uh, selector ball out of that bag will determine the probability of what could happen afterwards because it doesn't get put back in. We want the probability that two red balls are selected. So 7 elevenths for the first ball and then once we've taken that out there will be six red balls left out of ten. So we're looking for a red and a red, so there, that would be 7 elevenths times 6 tenths. So that example is quite straightforward. You don't need to do, use the formula so much, it's just logical thinking. This next example, um, we will need to use our formula for. Uh, the probability that it rains on Saturdays is 0.3. There's this football team called Occasionally United. They're more likely to win on a dry day. The probability that they win is 3 eighths on a dry day and 3 elevenths on a wet day. They won last Saturday. What's the probability that it was a dry day? Okay, so what we're looking at here is the probability that it was dry given that we know that they won. So putting it into our formula that we just saw, that's the same as the probability that it was dry and they won, divided by the probability that they won. So we're restricting this down to the conditions where we know that they won last Saturday. We're going to need a tree diagram. So we've got that it could be a dry day or a wet day, and that's a 0 0.7, 0 0.3 probability. If it's a dry day, the chances that they win will be 3 eighths, and the chances that they don't win will be 5 eighths. If it's a wet day, the chances of winning is 3 elevenths, so the chances of not winning is 8 elevenths. So now we've got this first line for the um, probability that it was dry and they won. So that's 0 0.7 times 3 eighths. Now we want to divide it by the probability that they won. So there's two lines where that could happen. It could be dry and win or wet and win. So we need to add those two lines together. So now we can put that on the bottom of our equation for the probability that they won. Type that all into your calculator to get our final answer. Next we'll have a look at independent events. So the outcome of one event does not affect the outcome of the other event. They're completely independent. Whereas before we were looking at conditional probability, so one thing affected the outcome of the other, this one is completely independent, um, so whatever happens on one event doesn't make any difference to the other event that we're looking at. So if A and B are independent events, then the probability of A given B is just the probability of A. 
if they're independent, it means the fact that we're restricting that condition to B having happened makes no difference because B does not affect A. And also we can put it the other way around. So the probability of B given A is the same as the probability of B. It's not affected by the fact that A has happened. We also get this result where if they're independent, we know that the probability of A and B is the same as the probability of A times the probability of B. If you're asked for proof that events are independent, then you can show any one of these three things. If you can show that those are true, then you've proved that the events are independent. So our last example, two fair dice are rolled, one's red and one is blue. So first of all, we're looking at two dice. They're separate from each other. They shouldn't affect each other's probability at all. Um, there's no way that rolling one dice will affect the roll of the other. So we want the probability that, first of all, the red score is an even number and the blue score is a four. Since we know that these are independent, we can simply times the two together. So the probability of having a red even would be a half and the probability of having a 4 would be a 6. So times them together we get a 12. The probability that the blue scores a 6 given that the red scores 6. So we could write this like this. So probability that we score a blue on the 6 isn't affected by the fact that we know that the red scored a 6. So it's just going to be the probability that we scored a 6 on the blue since those are independent. And the probability that both dice score a 6. Now, just be careful of the wording here because that is slightly different to the question that we've just had in B. We want to know the probability of getting both 6s at the same time, not a 6 on one given a 6 on the other. So this will be, because they're independent, we can just times the two things together.